My audience and I are familiar with the LLM way of thinking about AI. Conceptually, what are we missing in terms of thinking about AI from the RL perspective? Well, yes, I think it's really quite a different point of view, and it's it can easily get separated and lose the ability to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, large language models have become such a big thing, generative AI in general, a big thing. Um, and our field is subject to bandwagons and fashions. So we lose, we lose track of the uh, basic, basic things. Because I consider reinforcement learning to be basic AI. And what is intelligence, uh, the problem is, is to understand your world. And right. um, reinforcement learning is about understanding what your world, whereas large language models are about mimicking people, doing what people say you should do. They're not about figuring out what to do. Huh. I guess you would think that to, to emulate the trillions of tokens in the corpus of internet text, you would have to build a world model. In fact, these models do seem to have very robust world models, and they, they're the best um, world models we've made to date in AI, right? So what, what, what do you think that that's missing? I would disagree with most of the things you just said. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> just to mimic the, the what people say is not really to build a model of the world at all, I don't think. You know, you're mimicking things that have uh, a model of the world, the people. Right. But I don't want to approach the question in an adversarial way. Uh, but but I would I would question the idea that they um, they have a world model. So a world model would enable you to predict what would happen. Right. Uh, they they have they have the ability to predict what a person would say. They don't have the ability to predict what will happen. What we want, I think, to quote Alan Turing. What we want is a machine that can learn from experience. Right. Where experience is the things that actually happen in your life. You do things, you see what happens, um, and uh, that's what you learn from. Yeah. The large language models learn from something else. They learn from here's a situation and here's what a person did. And implicitly, the suggestion is you should do what the person did. Right. I guess maybe the, the crux, and I'm curious if you disagree with this, is some people will say, okay, so... This imitation learning has given us a good prior, or given these models a good prior, but reasonable ways to approach problems. And as we move towards the era of experience, uh, as you call it, this prior is going to be the basis on which we teach these models from experience because this gives them the opportunity to get uh, answers right some of the time. And then on this, you can build, uh, you can train them on experience. Do, do you agree with that perspective? No, I I agree that it's the it's the large language model perspective. Right. I don't think it's a good perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Here's why. Um, so, to be a prior for something, there has to be a real thing. I mean, a prior bit of knowledge should be the basis for actual knowledge. Right. What is actual knowledge? There's no definition of actual knowledge in that in that large language framework. What makes an action a good action to take? You recognize the value, the need for continual learning. Right. So if you need to learn continually, continually means learning during the normal interaction with the world. Yeah. And so then there must be some way during the normal interaction to tell what's right. Yep. Okay. So is there any way for it to tell in the largest language model setup to tell what's the right thing to say? You will say something and you will not get feedback about what the right thing to say is. Because there's no definition of what the right, right thing to say is. Yeah. There's no goal. Right. And if there's no goal, then there's there's one thing to say, another thing to say. There's no right thing to say. Right. So there's no ground truth. You can't have prior knowledge if you don't have ground truth. Because the prior knowledge is supposed to be a, a hint or an initial belief about what the truth is. Yeah. But there isn't any truth. There's no right thing to say. Right now, in reinforcement learning, there is a right thing to say yeah. or a right thing to do right. because the, the right thing to do is the thing that gets you reward. Right. So we have a definition of, of what the right thing to do is, and so we can have uh, prior knowledge or knowledge provided by pe people about what the right thing to right. do is, and then we can check it to see because because we have a definition of what the actual right thing to do is. Yeah. Now, an even simpler case is when you have, you're trying to make a model of the world, when you predict what will happen, you predict, and then you see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's ground truth. There's no ground truth in in uh, large language models, because you don't have a, a prediction about what will happen next. If you say something in your, in your um, conversation, 
there's n the large language models have no prediction about what the person will say in response to that or, or what the what the response will be. I mean, I think they do. Like, they, you can literally ask them, what, what, what would you anticipate a user might say in response? And they have a prediction. Oh, no, they, they, res they will respond to that question, right? Yeah. But they have no prediction in the substantive sense that they won't be surprised by what happens. And if something happens that isn't what you might say they predicted, they will not change because an unexpected thing has happened. And they're... To learn that, they'd have to make an adjustment. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.